Sims, and we are back with more Code Realize Winter Dead Miracles. <laughs> I'm so excited. I fought with the post office last night because they shipped a package. They did it return to sender because it had my business name on it and not my name. And Anyway, so I couldn't record last night. So I am literally recording this Saturday night, and I got to process this and get the shit uploaded tonight. So you have a part. Today, Sunday, hopefully. Um, if you didn't get a part on Sunday, that's why. Because, like, I was planning on recording a ton of this on Friday night, but I was so stressed out, pissed off, and just, like, I couldn't. I was like, I can't. I, I should have turned the game on because the second I turn the game on and I see, like, the intro song and I have little pictures and everything, I'm like, ah, they get so excited. So, um, yeah, I probably should have tried to play last night, but I was just so, like, ah, I can't. So. Yeah, just in case you didn't have an episode on Sunday and we had nothing, this is why. Um, sorry, but it happens. So anyway, here we are. We're back. I'm pretty sure we're still Victor because we have yet to be spicy. Or, well, Cardia, but spicy. Spicy. Anyway, so <clears throat> I got to get into my Victor voice again, which I don't really know if I went well last part, but like, whatever. It, it is what it is, because I can't remember these things. Anyway, on the way back, I walk along the banks of the Thames as I swing my arms laden with my supplies. And there are many bridges, big and small, that are built across this river. Among them, the exceptionally large Tower Bridge. Looking at it, I can't help it, uh, but to be reminded of that day when I last walked together with Spacey. Oh, I love that you're pining over me. It's adorable. Just come get me. My mind doesn't allow me to forget the fact that she was trying to say something to me atop the tower bridge. I wonder what Spacey was trying to say on that day. That she loves you and wants to be with you forever, you idiot! Would she answer if I asked her now? Yes, I love you. What? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, absolutely I would answer. Yes, I love you, Victor! God damn it! And then... If... If I didn't care who was around at the time... If I'd only said I wanted to be with you, if I'd only said that I loved you, what would have happened? Oh! <laughs> it's like almost heartbreaking. Oh! Oh! I love the fact that we get to see you. Yay! <laughs> I just want to stare at your adorable face. <laughs> I love our boy so much. This game is going to hurt me when it's over because this is it. Like, I don't think there is that, like... I mean, this one came out fast and then was localized, like, came out and then was localized really fast, but, like... I can't imagine there being another one. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe. Maybe they'll milk it, and but it's going to be like a couple of years anyway. You know what I mean? Because this one just came out. So what actually was it? Well, this was localized this year, but I think it literally just came out last year. I think it was a 2018. Maybe end of 2017 max, but I don't, I don't even think it was that old. I think it was literally 2018, but anyway. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would have, at the very least, troubled her. No. But even so, I'm sure there must have been something waiting beyond that had I told her. Oh. You precious thing. Doesn't this hurt you? You're like, oh, the feels! You're tugging at my heartstrings, just run and tell me, goddammit. Realizing I stepped into the lower street, I sharpened my eyes as they had lost focus. And this district is London's most dangerous. If I let my guard down, then there might come a time when more than just my wallet would be taken from me. And so, keeping a sharp eye on my surroundings, I arrived at the clinic. I immediately noticed the envelope sticking out of the mailbox. Is it a letter for me? Oh, it's another letter from Mother. A mail from somewhere far like Switzerland would have to cross the ocean, taking even more time to arrive here. To receive a reply so quickly was something unusual and unprecedented. Yeah, because I feel like it's been days. Perhaps she was satisfied with my previous letter. It's such a leisurely expectation, isn't it? It's going to be a verbal bitch slap from your mom telling you to go after the girl. I'm immediately blown away as I read the letter after stepping inside. Dating! Oh! Vic! Father and I are so relieved to hear that you're dating such a lovely girl. It's funny that they call him Vic instead of like Victor. We called him Victor through the whole thing, but then there's constantly references, especially in the second game, calling him like Fran. And it's like, 
No, we never called him Fran. Never once did we call him Fran in the first one. Why are we calling him that? Like, why are we all of a sudden? I like, and that's the thing. Even on all like the merch and everything, all the little things, it always says like Fran, and you're like, but we never called him that. <laughs> like, was that supposed to be in the translation, and we didn't? When they just kept calling him Victor, because we always called him Victor. I don't know. If you've gone through these lengths to describe her, we simply must meet her. I should have read that in his voice, but whatever. <laughs> what? Your father and I will be coming on Christmas Eve, so be sure to plan accordingly with her. <laughs> oh, Victor. What? Fortunately, it seems there'll be a festival then, and it would delight me so much if we can celebrate with you and your wife to be oh my god mom whoa i was like there is a girl i'm interested in oh thank god you're getting married you just she literally started the letter like oh i'm so glad you're dating someone mom i said i was interested in someone you're dating someone i can't wait to meet your wife wait whoa whoa you just jumped a whole bunch of motherfucking pond lady to my dearest son love mother oh my god i get to meet his mommy and his daddy what? Well, now we're us. Hmm. All right. I'm uncertain about the particulars, but if just looking from the front like this, then the house is pretty clean. The north wind whistles as it moves. It's a season where the evergreen tree remains green, while any lesser tree loses its leaves until only branches are seen. Gazing at the mansion, mended only enough so that the draft wouldn't be uncomfortable, and let out a sigh of relief. Mended only enough. It still looks pretty damn nice. I mean, you know, there's some cracks and shit, but like, what? It's old. Uh, oh no, I don't have time to be doing this. I have to sweep the living room and make all the beds in the guest rooms, too. I take a deep breath of cold, but refreshing air, and then let it all out. I take the broom and enter the mansion. If all possible, I need to hurry and clean while I still have a moment. After all, a guest is coming to this house today. Victor? Oh my god, look! Ah! Oh, I can't! Oh, I hate that I don't have my little... I don't have my pointer thing, so I can't point out on the mantle. The tall picture is fucking Lupin and fucking Van Helsing. You can tell. And that one? Oh, Okay. So the first one, I can't really tell what that one is. Like, I'm, I'm going from right to left. And now, then, like, so I don't know what that first one is, but that one, the next one in the back is Lupin and Van Helsing. The one in front is the one from when we, I'm pretty sure that's the one from when we won the airship race. <laughs> Those are all pictures of our friends. I love that. <laughs> Leave it to me to be able to fucking pick that shit out. Like, <laughs> like ah, okay. I left the window open to air out the room. I wiped down the shelf, table, and chairs. I'm so glad we get the house cleaning part of this. Anyway. I swept the floor shortly after, then prepared new wood for the fireplace. This should be uh, pretty much all of it. Taking a quick moment to breathe once more, I direct my eyes toward the single letter that's spread on top of the table. Victor Frankenstein. My important friend. The letter that came from him. I was a little surprised when he contacted me suddenly. This isn't the first time that a letter came from Victor. Even until now, Victor had been regularly sending me letters, writing about London and the rest of the members. This letter is different from his usual ones. He sounds flustered, disorderly. It's a terribly short and simple letter. I'm sorry this is so sudden, but I'm going to be seeing you soon. And there's something I want to talk to you about in person. There were multiple occasions when we'd go to London and get checkups, but this would be the first time that Victor will come to us. I wonder what happened. I do hope he doesn't have bad news. In that sense, it is difficult to not feel anxious. But if anything, the thought of Victor coming gives me enough joy to outweigh my fears. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the beautiful music. One of my most cherished, cherished friends, Victor. Even after the incident, he still manages to help me far more than my other friends. After all, the only person who's even able to examine the siblings, and we are indeed an unusual pair, is Victor. He helped me a great deal by removing the poison both before and after the incident. I can't count how many times he'd reassure me by saying, You are a normal girl, despite the poison that ran through my body. 
He gave me strength through his kind words. I think that's how I was able to become human. He's a really, really important person to me. So much that the mere thought of it makes my heart throb. Oh. All of this is pointless to think about now, but back when it was decided that I was to leave London with Finnis, I was almost expecting that Victor would tell me, I want you to stay with me. Although he had never explicitly told me this, I always had an idea that the words were there, waiting to come out, and that Victor thought of me in a very special way. But it never came to pass. And that day, and that moment, without waiting for Victor's words, if I had been able to at least utter the tiniest phrase, just to let him know I didn't want to leave, I wonder if it would have been different. At this point, I'm not sure I'll ever know. Uh, oh no. Is that really the time? I take a quick glance at the clock. Not much longer until Victor's arrival. I take a few breaths to try and calm myself and go to a mirror in the corner of the room. Okay, I comb my hair, and I'm wearing the loveliest outfit I own. Is there something else? Should I put on some makeup? The lipstick I bought while I was with Shirley could be somewhere around... <laughs> the Finnis voice. I don't remember the Finnis voice. Yeah, he kind of had a douchey voice. Like, you know, he's like, hey, sister. But he was douchey, and now he's like, nice, Finnis. So I don't know what kind of voice to give him anymore. I don't. But, okay, we'll work into it. But anyway, I can't give him the, I can't give him the douche, like, oh, it's hard. What voice did I give him in the second one? Because he always did, like, okay, I'm going to read this in the douchey Finnis voice just to kind of get myself into it. But he was, he would... Literally, if, member, if I remember correctly, would have always been like, hey, sister, like, it's kind of creepy when you smile so much while looking in the mirror. Can you stop? But he's not snotty like that anymore, so I don't know. Are you ill? That wouldn't be good. Although, the professor is coming, so perhaps you can get an examination while he's here. I gotta ease into a nicer voice. As usual, the one who was peeking into the room from the hallway was the other resident here. My little brother, Finnis. His rough personality has been smoothing out since we began living together, but his sharp tongue hasn't seemed to change much at all, unfortunately. Okay, so he's still snan like a little snotty. Finnis takes off his apron and steps into the room. Still got his little man pony buns. Yeah. How adorable. Oh, look at his little suit. It's so cute. Anyway, I baked some cookies. Make sure to offer some to the professor when he arrives, okay? I also brought down some of the nice tea. It's the blend that we don't serve, Hansel. Honestly, what are you smiling about? It's just getting worse. <laughs> I was just thinking that your attitude toward Victor has gotten softer. When St. Germain drops by, or when Impy says he wants to visit, you're completely ready to chase them away. Well, you know, Professor Stein has been helping me out with all the medical stuff, too. Although he has inclinations toward being a mad scientist, and could bear to put on some weight. He's the most acceptable of the bunch. Putting it like that makes the others sound... Well, I didn't want to finish my thought, because I felt like these words might return to me somehow. I won't bother. And that aside, I imagine he'll be here at any moment. As if to answer my thought, I hear a knock resound from the entrance. <laughs> oh! I'm just so happy we're together again! I knew it was coming. Like, obviously, we've been pairing, but just seeing him here. Oh, my God, I'm so <laughs> Crazy can't handle this. Like, I'm a fucking mess. Wow, and so this is where you live now? You said it would be tough to fix up, but it's cleaned up very nicely. It's on par with even the Count's mansion. It really is cute. Charmingly feminine. Also, don't look too much. Some of it's still a total mess, and it really is quite embarrassing. Uh, I'm sorry. I think I'm just very excited to see you. Victor came all, the, all this way, journeying via train and wagon. I greet him and begin showing him around the house. First the outside, then the living room, guest room, and then finally here to my room. Oh, we're into my room. Oh, well, that explains the pictures on the wall. Like, why else would we have pictures? I wish... Oh, I hate the fact that my little trackpad doesn't work. I can't point them out. But I was like, our guest room has pictures of our friends. I mean, yeah, but... Your guests are going to show up and be like, what? Well... Our guests are our friends, the only the old people in the pictures, but makes more sense that it's our room. Okay. Victor, of course, had seen my room back in St. Germain's mansion. Letting him into my room at my own house feels a bit 
different than that did. Yeah. If I had to describe it in a word, it makes me feel so very restless. Uh, did I forget to put away my laundry? Is my hair okay? Do I have bedhead? I'm beginning to become very worried about things that usually don't bother me. It's probably just my imagination, but I feel like my heart is racing. And mine is. Is something wrong, Spacey? If you're not feeling well, I can take a look. Uh, no, no, I'm fine. Just perfect. Perfect. Uh, the way you say that is worrisome. But really, I'm fine. I'm just a little restless. I always see you at the clinic, so to see you here, it's strange. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. If you're reacting this way, it's making me start to feel a little restless, too. I'm so terrible at conversation. I'm overanalyzing every little thing. Welcome to being a girl. It isn't only my words, but I can't stop focusing on everything Victor's saying, either. Uh, oh, that's right. I'll go make some tea. Uh, Finish should be done with the dishes now, so I'll call on him and... Wait! Victor grabs my arm as I try to rush out of the room, and almost out of character, he firmly but gently turns me around. <gasps> CG time. Look, her giant derp eyes actually look so good. Like, she's one of the, She still has the giant derp eyes, don't get me wrong. But they actually, like... This, she's shocked. But also, they're not so big that you're like, Why? They're just... They're, like, ruining her face. It's like... You know. They're done giant derp eyes. But they're done well. Huh. Don't call him! I like how her little lips are like, Ooh, what? She's like a little, like, ooh. Her face is fucking adorable in this. I want to talk to you. It's just the two of us, Spacey. Just the two of us? Her dress is fucking adorable, too. Yeah, I told you I had something important to say, and I needed to come talk to you in person. Victor's serious, steady eyes. His heated voice. Could it be? I feel as if the gem, my heart, is burning up inside of me. He wants to speak with me alone. A very, very important matter. Okay, now you're jumping pawns like his mother over there. I mean, it's true, but she's like, very, very important matter. He just said it was important. He didn't say very, very. Could this possibly be... Honestly, this is incredibly embarrassing, but I think it may be my only chance. I just need to say it. Please, listen to me carefully. Y yes of c course And my reply to his determined... In my reply to his determination, my lips quiver in an attempt to prepare myself. I listen to the sound of my heart. We stare into each other's eyes and then... Oh! That's so cute! It's not even like, I love you, it's like, date me! <laughs> wow! Aw. Oh. Spacey, please be my significant other! Victor spoke. On the day I left London... No, rather ever since that day... These words I've been longing for make my very heart tremble. Uh, are you? I want to know if I'm really enough for him, but I decide to swallow my words. I don't need to ask him that. I just... I need to be direct. I need to tell him about what I feel inside. I take a deep breath and as I begin to open my mouth to speak, Victor's words meet mine. <gasps> of course, you don't have to be my real significant other. What Victor said, it stops me from saying when I was about to. No, Victor, you just ruined it. Oh, Victor. Oh, oh, sweetie, you ruined it. What? He wants me to be a significant other, but he says that I don't have to be real? What in the world does this mean? I can't comprehend it and I stop moving. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense, huh? Uh, let me explain. You see, actually, I just need you to pretend to be my significant other. You just broke her heart. Oh, can you explain this further? An extremely flat voice, one that surprises even me, comes out. Sure, it's a long story, but you see, let her... Sit down. Oh, yes, of course. I'm going to make some tea first. You can explain it all in a moment. Until then, 
don't go anywhere. I mean it. I order him with no room for negotiation. If he moves at all, I'm certain I'll employ a certain technique Van Helsing left me with. <laughs> She's like, I'm so mad. Oh. Soon, just after finishing three cups of black tea. Um, so I had written about you in a letter I sent to my family back in my home country. Okay. I had mentioned you were a girl that I'm interested in. Okay. So they misunderstood you to be actually involved with me and even assumed we were engaged. They're coming for Christmas. Okay. I'm at a loss for words. But did she not catch the... I told them you were a girl I was interested in and she's like, wait. Let me back that up. You're interested in me? So, like, you would actually like me to be your real significant other, but if not that, at least fake it? Okay, let's do this for real, honey, because I love you. I don't know the nature of the letter he sent, but it is clear that its contents were misleading to his parents. Also, to say he's interested in me. And that just about catches you up. If it wouldn't be too much trouble, perhaps you'd be able to do this for me. Of course, I don't want to waste all your time, so it would only be on Christmas. You see, I understand what's going on now. Victor's gentle way of giving his parents peace of mind about him has backfired. I suppose what I'm upset about is only my own misunderstanding of this. Victor doesn't deserve my anger. A little bit, but I'm no saint. But first off, stop talking to me like this. Be normal with me. Yes, understood. Er, I mean, sure. Now what to do? I've calmed down now thanks to the tea, and my thoughts are processing normally. I understand that Victor is troubled, but for me to agree to this is very... No, I feel extremely opposed to it. At this point, wouldn't it be better to think of a different plan? Such as... Oh! Dodge the topic and cancel the meeting. Ask someone else to do it. I don't know what happens if you do different things. Um, I didn't know there were actual choices. What would be better? Ask someone Ask someone else to do it. No, he's already mentioned me by name, so dodge the topic and cancel the meeting. You asked me to do this, but I'm not a very good actor. I'll probably let the truth slip. You should just come up with an excuse. You can just say I came down with an illness. Hmm, canceling plans because you're sick. Ah, uh, classic technique, yes. Do you have a problem with this? Oh, well, my mother has this way about her. If she hears you're sick, I'm certain she'd want to come take care of you right away. Also, the significant other of a doctor getting sick at Christmas, my parents will never let me forget that. I see. Based on how I feel right now, I don't mind if Victor gets scolded, but I guess it isn't that great of a plan. I bring up a few more ideas, but none of them are very good. I wonder if it makes a difference. I'm sure it just changes the topic of conversation. Like, I'll research that after. I believe this makes him worry even more, because he asks me once again. So, you really can't do it. Be my significant other. Seeing him in such a state allows me to feel sympathy, if only for a moment. After a nice long silence. Well, I wouldn't say that I can't. Really? I give him a single nod. Though I'm the one obliging such a request, he's the one who can't believe I agreed. Th thank you so much! This is really, really helpful. So, on December 24th... Actually, never mind. What would you do if I just said that? What? My anger, which hadn't left me entirely, is likely the cause of my desire for mischief. Watching Victor begin to panic, my expression turns into a smile. <laughs> huh? Wh what happened? Nothing. Sorry. I just wanted to tease you. It really takes me back to when we were with everyone. You... You were always troubled by people acting too carefree. You'd panic, worry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And thinking about all that takes me back, too. Everyone in Lupin's crew are all really amazing people, and they don't live very ordinary lives. I have to nod to that. Though he says it in a way that seems distant, Victor's life is also far from ordinary. Oh, that's right. Uh, talking about the crew reminded me. I have some good news for you. Good news? You might have already read this in the paper, uh, but to celebrate the reconstruction, there'll be a festival in London at Christmas. 
everyone from Lupin's crew decided that it would be nice to get together. Oh my god, do we get to see everybody? <laughs> like, we'll get to see everybody, like, in each person's path, but I want all of our boys together in one place. Do you think I could go to that too? Of course. It wouldn't be the whole crew without you. Christmas is still a little ways away, but the city has already begun decorating and opening markets. It's been so lively. Ah, uh, right. I heard that was happening. It's been so long. I'd love to see everyone. And the festival sounds wonderful. There's no reason not to go, so... Hey, Victor. If we agree to do this favor for you, can we do it under a certain condition? Of course. Anything. I'm asking such a huge favor of you. So, what is it? Well... I want to be a real significant other. The next day, specifically December 20th, my outlandish request... I... Oh, <clears throat> this is, uh... This is Victor. Okay. My outlandish request, I want you to be my significant other, I was accepted oh, with the condition. Phew, being on a train for such a long time really does a number on one's back. With the burden lifted, I'm well on my way back to London. There are still a few more days before the arrival of mother and father. All that I have left to do until then is explain the situation to my friends and, and make sure the clinic is organized. And then, first thing that morning, I'll meet Spacey, who will just be arriving. I'll guide her around town and then we'll meet with my parents. After that's done, I'll have to thank her somehow. Those were the things I was planning, but... I feel like it's been such a long time since I've been in London. I'm sorry. I couldn't even read that without looking at Finnis and being like, oh, look at the fucking extra cape. That fucking cloak is so fucking extra. It's not, she's like got this cute little hand, this cute little jagged, and like her little feather, like her fluffy cuffs and everything. And he's over there in this fucking like queen cape. Oh, my God. Venice, uh, <laughs> honey. Oh, God. Now, hold on. Why is it so cold? Oh, we're south of Wales, aren't we? Is something wrong? Next to me are the two siblings who arrived a bit earlier than planned. Uh, let's go somewhere warmer. Uh, there's a cafe not too far from here. And I turn around towards them to lead the way when all of a sudden... I don't know who's saying... Oh god, which one of our boys is it? Okay, someone is saying, hmm, this is a rare trio. And the voice that calls out to me is rather unexpected. I'm hoping it's one of our boys. It could be Watson. Oh, it's Hansel! Ugh, Idea! What are you doing here? Idea, a mysterious organization headed by a woman named Omnibus. They fashion themselves as the overseers of history and claim to guide the path of humanity. It's Hansel, Finnis. Oh, please remember my name. We're friends. I don't remember the voice I gave Hansel, so whatever. We're gonna have just a... Unfortunately for you, I don't remember having a friend like hey don't touch me stop poking my cheek i have seen him a few times before oh this might be the first time we've exchanged words properly like this um just like the count he's one of idea's apostles apostles of idea the members of idea a society whose role is the overseeing of humanity's history there are 13 members at present each one possessing capabilities far beyond those of an ordinary person No, oh, Hexenhaus. Hexenhaus. Hansel Hexenhaus. <laughs> Why, just so that said that wrong anyway. And that's it, right? Yes, that's right. Um, Professor Victor Frankenstein. I can't do his voice. I don't remember what I did. He's got to have a quiet, like... Yeah, he's got to have, like, a deep, quiet voice. Like, a weird... But I can't do it. I don't, anyway. I'm Hansel. <laughs> Hansel. He's so hot right now. <laughs> All I fucking can think of! So, like, you should be like, I can't do a <laughs> can't do an Owen Wilson voice. <laughs> oh my god, I need to watch the Lander now, I'm sorry. And this is my sister, Gretel. A black cape and a giant fork, with a strange silver hair color. He should stand out very much, but people around don't seem to stare. I mean, he literally is carrying a giant fork that's chained to him. Perhaps there's a strange power at work, and maybe only we can see him, then you look crazy. It's an unscientific way of thinking, but he has a mysterious air around him that leads me to believe so. 
Hmm. Still suddenly approaches me. Though his face is youthful, his eyes possess a deep hue that reminds me of the Count. Mother was a little worried, so we came to check. I smell... a gentle smell of sunny green from you. I am sure we have nothing to worry about. Huh? Before I can ask what he meant, Hansel walks away, not making a sound. Uh... Whoa! He quickly grabs Finnis and begins carrying him. P put me down! What is this? What the heck? I promised you before. You said the cold made you want to visit somewhere to the south. Huh? Wait! I might have said that before, but that was just a casual idea over tea. I keep the promises I make my friends. So let's get going. Is Hansel kin- Oh my god. Are you shipping Hansel and Fin- Oh my god, are you guys going on a cute little date? Because I'm just saying, Finnis is a little fucking extra in that cave. He might be a little gay. But where? Egypt? Peru? It's summer in the southern hemisphere right now. So somewhere down there. Waving to us as we stand speechlessly, Hansel walks away quickly. I'll return it eventually. See you later. It. Don't say it as if I'm some rental item! Two of them disappear as Finnis yells out. To disappear right before our eyes. I wonder what mechanism was behind that. Oh, I'm reading that as me. I keep forgetting that we're fucking Victor all the time. It's weird. I get it when we had to do the beginning, but now we are we should just be spacey. We shouldn't be Victor anymore. It's weird. It's weird for me. It's hard enough doing all the voices. Now I gotta be them all the time. Like, I gotta be them and woo me. It's weird. <laughs> like, I can't. Can't wrap my head around it. Anyway. C come back before dinner. That might not be very possible. I wonder if this is okay. It was so sudden. It is Hansel after all, but... I think it'll be okay. It's happened before. Besides, after Finnis comes back, though, he sounds... Oh, after Finnis comes back, though he sounds disgruntled, I know he's happier for these trips. I'm sure he... Oh, I'm sure he was joking when he said Egypt or Peru, but... I wonder where they went. Maybe Finnis is actually facing some hardships. Anyway, Victor, don't we have to get going? Spacey telling me this suddenly brings me back to reality. Uh, oh, right. Uh, we have some luggage, too, so let's stop by my clinic first. Van Helsing and Delacroix arrive tomorrow, and so we can head to the Count's mansion at the same time they do. Oh, I'm so excited for this! <gasps> oh my god! Alright, let's go. If there's anything else you'd like to see... As I'm about to take another step, I'm pulled back by the sleeve of my coat. I look behind in surprise as Spacey glares at me with a rather discontented look. You promised. You said when we arrived in London you'd fulfill the condition. R r r right. Yes, that's right. I take a deep breath to calm my heart down. And the condition. Oh. For her to act as my significant other, the condition presented to me was basically... So I have two conditions. You said one! Miss Macy smiled mischievously as she began explaining to me. Well, let's start with the first one. As much as I must act as your significant other, you must take care to act as mine as well. Um, how do you mean? Linking arms, being affectionate on dates, uh, these sorts of things? But of course. This is a little embarrassing, but if I'm to convince my parents, I will need to portray this level of intimacy. I am not in agreement. Spacey deepened her smile. Yet, though we will try to act as such, the truth is, we aren't very good actors. R right. And with Lupin or the Count, it might be possible, but I'm rather unsuited for this. Precisely. So for my second condition... Oh. We're going to need practice to pull this off. <laughs> I just love these, like, pretend to be my girlfriend. She's like, all right, we're going to need practice, so I'm going to need you to get naked and hop in my bed. We're going to practice some shit. She's like, I'm just... She's, like, conning him into a relationship, even though he's interested in her. So she's like, wait, you're interested in me. I'm going to pretend to be my boyfriend. All right, I'm just going to make this happen for real, you fucking idiot. <laughs> she's like, oh, boys are stupid. Like, 
Lupin always encouraged going all out. That's why. I want to come to London tomorrow so we can practice being significant others. One moment. Oh, wait, one moment. Oh, when you say tomorrow, you mean, like, tomorrow? Yes, or we can begin right now if you prefer. I can't say I wouldn't have wanted this. I am the one that asked for this, after all. I have no other choice. I can't refuse. And although this may seem indecent, or more so, perhaps I feel bad to put her in a situation like this with me. I cannot deny that I find this situation completely embarrassing, but it is also filling me with happiness. So, yes, let's give it our best shot. Yes, let's give it a try. I bow deeply, and she responds with a smile. And so... Th then, mademoiselle, please, right this way. Mm hmm thank you. And I present my arm to her, and she gently wraps hers around it, coming closer to me. This is not the distance of a mere friend, but the closeness of a lover. I feel the warmth radiating from her body, and my cheeks become slightly flush. And though giving the appearance of composure, Spacey's cheeks are also slightly rosy, indicative of embarrassment she felt inside. And soon after exiting the station, something cold falls onto her faces. Victor, look! You see it? Snow! Oh, you're right. It really is that cold out, huh? The gentle snow kisses our cheeks before melting softly from their heat. Like the wings of an angel, the snowflakes fall from the sky with grace. And the veil of snow continues for some distance, causing the view afar to blur. In temperatures like this, if the snowing continues, there could be quite a pile later. Even the sounds of the church bells reflect off the fresh snow in a much softer way than usual. It's so beautiful. It's like magic. <laughs> yeah, it's quite romantic. With Christmas just around the corner, London is adorned in the holiday spirit. Look how pretty everything is. <laughs> Look at all the light! I can't even point- Oh, God, guys, I keep trying to touch the touchy pad and point things out. And I can't do it because I got this on- I don't have it on my Vita. Oh, I should have gotten it on the Vita. The only reason I didn't is because for some reason the second game, I luckily had gotten the limited edition on the PlayStation 4 for Bouquet of Rainbows, which was the first two together. Um, and I had already had the first two games, like, separate on the Vita. The second one was just, it did not look, like, the characters didn't look sharp. There was something wrong, like, to me. Like, I played that first part, and I was like, I just don't like the way this looks. And I put it on the PlayStation, and it looks so much better. So I was like, I just don't want it to be that same situation where I get on the Vita, and I'm like, my eyeballs, of course... With my giant TV, I didn't have my giant TV at the time, and I didn't know I was going to get one. But now with my giant TV, I'm like, well, nothing would have looked fuzzy. I'd have been like, I can see everything. I can see my own reflection in your eyes, Victor. That's how fucking close I am to this TV. But, so, anyway. The gold stars, the red ornaments, the verdant ribbons, the white snow. Is it verdant? Verdant? What is that? What's burdened? What color is that? I've never even heard of that. Anyone looking upon this place covered in snow would feel as if they entered a magical world. However... Oh, look, Victor! It's as if the snow is dancing according to how I'm moving. This face is sparkling. Her eyes, beautiful like jewels, are wide as she looks at this cheerful city. She lets go of my hand, and as she spins one, snow blossoms in the air around her feet. He's just mesmerized. The city is definitely beautiful. But to me... I like the fact that we get to choose as him. Don't say nothing. Say this, boy. Say it. I don't know what happens. I don't know if we make... If the choices make any... I don't know. And the beauty of the city is nothing compared to you. What? I let my mind run as my thoughts were racing. Uh, my face became red hot. Her eyes stare at me, wide in her surprise. I can see my reflection panicking in them. Oh, uh, n no, that was, um, you see, I didn't mean, it was unintentional. It's okay. 
You don't have to panic, Victor. It's just what my significant other would say. Uh, right. I do wonder why she sees so much, seems so much calmer than I do. I was the one who even asked her to be my significant other, after all. Maybe she thinks we're still acting. This Macy gives me a gentle smile and links her arms with me once again. And that, for some reason, feels like a waste. And I look up at the sky once again. Is this your first time seeing snow? In the end, I'm only able to say a few simple remarks. No, it's not that. Just, I've never seen snow this closely. I see. That makes sense. It doesn't usually snow this long here. Seems like a very special winter this year. Oh, of course it is. It's a wintertide miracle. <laughs> what do you mean? Does the snow last longer in other places? Yes, Switzerland, for example. Every year, December to March, snow will fall until it piles up. In places with higher elevations, it'll snow year-round, and since it's cold, a lot of it doesn't melt, and so on. Interesting. I wonder why there's such a difference. It's kind of nostalgic. This Macy be uh, begins becoming interested in various topics. I discuss them with her as we walk, and she seems to enjoy the discussion. It's exactly the same as when I would teach things to the crew. I'm supposed to be acting like her lover today, but I feel like it's so difficult to do so. No, perhaps it's that I'm not looking to play the part. Hey, Spacey, what if I told you I actually, um, Victor? Never mind, it's nothing. Not much longer until we get to the clinic. The snow's really coming down, so let's hurry. Although I'm having Passy take care of him today, I'm sure Zizi would be really happy to see you. I couldn't bear to try and tell her again. A bitter feeling gripping my chest is the disappointment I feel about myself. Oh, I suppose I did word it rather extremely, and I'm certain it's not as simple as I've made it out to be. But if you were able to at least imagine it to be this easy, perhaps that's relieving. Watson was nice enough, nice enough to say this to me. I could already imagine it, and yet... I'm seriously... uncool. I doubt they'd say uncool, but... Laughter wells up toward myself who can't even say it at this point. It's about like Hakuoki being like, Son of a bitch! Fuck! I don't think they said shit like that, but... Okay, whatever. <laughs> God, I loved it. The language and that was just so not... For, right for the period. Oh. Maybe I'm just afraid. Afraid of destroying the happiness that Spacey obtained by meddling in now. Wait, happiness that Spacey obtained by meddling in now. Okay, I get what you're saying. It just sounds weird. I let go of her arms and hold her hand instead, and then lead her through the crowd, pretending to be a significant other. It's the best I'm able to do. Oh, Victor. <laughs> With the amount of snow falling, we couldn't get to St. Germain's Mansion. I never know who we are. We're probably Spacey now because I'm talking that. Okay, so that was, it was, it was Spacey. See, I knew it. I read that in Victor's voice. I'm like, it's Spacey. It's going to be Spacey because this is what happens. If I read it in her voice, we would be Victor. Er, okay. We decided to clean up Victor's clinic and I stayed the night. Today is December 21st. We only have a short amount of time left until Victor's parents are going to arrive. In any case, we had accomplished the task of walking together in public, as a couple. The next course of action would be... You have to kiss me like you mean it. Our nostalgic home away from home, covered in white due to the snow that fell yesterday. Oh, God. Count St. Germain's mansion. Are we going to meet all of our boys? I can't wait! We stand at the entrance to the mansion, taking a few breaths in order to prepare ourselves for what we're about to do. Today's mission. Telling our friends that we're... A couple. Mission, huh? It's so serious. Well, of course it is. You have to do it. At any rate, Victor and I, joined by Cece, approach the entrance to the mansion, arms linked like any normal couple. Woo! They're gonna see right fucking through you! It feels a bit embarrassing to be like this in front of everyone, but if this is going to be difficult, then there's no way you can pull it off with your parents. Life's greatest challenge is introducing your partner to your parents. I read that in a book before. 
I'm all of a sudden very curious as to what kind of books you're usually reading. Okay, brace yourself. Time to face the music. Oh my god. The sound of the door knocker itself feels nostalgic. Then... I'm holding my breath. Just beyond the open door, a few familiar faces are gathered. Hi, everyone! I'm back! That's exactly how... I'm back, guys! Where are my boys? Goodness! The angel has descended! Welcome back, my sweet! Hey! Hey, you finally arrived. We've been waiting for you, too. Oh my god, I love them so much. I love how they all have, like, new little outfits. <laughs> oh my god, I love this so much! I just want to squeeze them all at once together. Oh my god. I'm just so sad that they don't have, act like, they have, like, plushies with, like, weird bear bodies. For that, but they need real plushies of all of them so I can just squeeze them. I'm missing them so much. Y yeah, we're here. Lupin, you just got back from France, right? That's right. We could have stayed a bit longer since we've wrapped... Oh, we could have stayed a bit longer since we'd wrapped up our business. But I heard the crew was getting together, and there was going to be a festival in London. It's only natural I prioritize this, right? Ahem, <clears throat> not gonna... Anyway, Spacey... When did you arrive? Oh, yesterday afternoon. It was just as the snow started to fall. Ah, I see. It's been a while since you've been to London, hasn't it? You should try to have some fun. Yeah. Look, oh my god. Okay, when he puts on his coat, it's like fucking glorious. Okay, like I've seen it on the guard, but like this outfit too, like, god. He definitely dresses like a motherfucking count. He's like, look at me, I'm glorious. I, he had a, he had a quieter, softer voice, but I don't want to get it mixed up with, he's one of the ones that I have a hard time with the voice doing, so I'm just, we're going to have to ease into this. Like, oh, what did I do for him? Oh, you know what I hate? I hate when I forget the voice or I'm not sure of a voice because I don't want to like give them a voice. I feel embarrassed if I give them the voice and it's not right and we have to work into it. I know you guys know that this is how this works. Like, I'm not good at this all the time. Sometimes a voice just comes. And sometimes it just, and sometimes I'm like, or like this. I can't remember quite. I know he was a little more quiet and gentle, but we'll just, anyway. Welcome home, you two. We'll work into it. I can't do it. And we can't forget Cece. <laughs> and this is quite a lovely bunch. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I really am so glad to see you, St. Germain. Uh, it's already so lively. I hope we don't cause a ruckus. Um, on that aside, I was wondering if you would notice. Uh, see, and the two of us, uh, there's something different about... Oh, it's Deli, isn't it? Cece? Ah, uh, we're Cece right now! Because it's not Van Helsing, he would not be that excited. <laughs> I love Deli. Oh, oh, this fur, this form, this bark. You are without a doubt force of darkness number one. <laughs> Pushing aside Victor mid-sentence, Deli and Cece started frolicking. I fucking love it. Delacroix II. After a boy who inherited the name of the vampire king Delacroix, he had previously sworn revenge on Van Helsing who killed his parents. But now that some time has passed, he's on a journey to protect the displaced vampires. He seems delighted with the reunion, and Cece is very happy, too. Ahem. <clears throat> this is my favorite boyfriend, though. Sorry for our tardy arrival. Oh! God, he's just as gorgeous as ever. Oh, my God. I love them. Oh, I love all of them. God, you are still so gorgeous. Why? It's been a while, you two. You both look like you're doing great. Van Helsing! Deli! It's been such a long time. I'm so happy to see you two. I, like, I know, I so am. Has your journey been going smoothly? Well, we take it a little at a time. It's slow, but we're making progress. And that's the closest answer I have. Look at his fucking precious face. <laughs> Why are you so precious? Oh, I think I've heard a few rumors, too. I heard you have more allies among the nobles. Yeah, everything may not be going perfectly, but it hasn't been completely fruitless. We'll complete our objective no matter what. So, um... 
Everyone, attention please. And now that we have a moment, uh, there's something that I want to say. Huh? Hey, we're missing someone. Where's Venice? Oh, my little brother was kidnapped. What? K kidnapped? Ah, I see. Hansel must have taken him somewhere. Yeah, they're probably enjoying the warmth under a sunny sky in the south by now. <laughs> Hansel seems to think of him as his little brother. Well, not to worry. I can bring him back if necessary. I see. That's good for them. It's unfortunate I can't see him, though. If you ever find yourself in Wales while you're on your travels, please stop by. We'd love to have you. Looking around once again, a deep nostalgia wells up in my heart. I know, right? Don't you feel it? This is going to happen every path. It's going to be the nostalgia, but it's only really going to impact you this first time. Because it'll be like, oh, we're all back together again. When you load the game up, it's like, welcome back. We missed you. It's like, I missed you too, game. Even the first time you do it. You're like, I missed you too. <laughs> just want to hug my TV, but my arms won't fit around it. It's too big. <laughs> this place just makes me feel as if I belong here. Even now. Can, again, can you just stay here and have a man harem? I know we kind of have those. Like, you can date multiple guys. I want to date them all. Can I just have them all? It's the closest I'm going to get to a man harem ending. Anyway. As I smile, I feel my eyes squint a little. Empy, who had frozen expression, who had a frozen expression for a minute there, pushes everyone aside and steps forward. As he noticed. Wait, 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 wait. Empy, why are you making such a fuss? I'm very glad we're all together again, but you're all missing something very important. I'm really glad we're all here too, Empy. Listen, I'm really happy you're happy, and truly, I could fly to the moon on this feeling, or rather, maybe I'm already on the moon, but... What is this, Vicky? You scoundrel! How is it you're here with her Lincoln arms? Tell me everything, damn it! Ah, uh, someone finally brought it up. Thanks, MP. Everyone seemed to talk so casually, I wasn't sure if I needed to address it. I try to stare intently at Victor. Don't forget the reason we came here. Filled with that feeling, Victor briefly pauses, but then... Uh... uh ahem. Well, you see, not my friends. Uh, please listen. He gives me a nod and grabs my shoulder, placing his hand out in front of him. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's like, I am, and he's like, God damn it! <laughs> She's my significant other now! I won't forgive anyone who lays a hand on her! With an indescribable force coming from within, an attitude so bold and brazen, Victor makes his proclamation. Oh my god. Oh. Such a shocking statement to throw at them, our friends who were all gathered. Really? What a joyous occasion! We must make a toast! Yes. Oh, I just received a fantastic wine. I shall open that one. Everyone nods in agreement and begins to get up. Uh, hmm. Hold it! Just hold it right there. How can you guys accept this so easily like it's normal? You could bear to react with an, are you serious? Or perhaps, when did this happen, you know? Well, I mean, you say that, but it really isn't that strange, is it? It seems very natural to me. Ugh! Won't someone question it? Impy's perspective is probably the normal one. I was expecting everyone to be more surprised. Victor is in a state of shock about this, too. I, I mustered up every ounce of courage within to say it, uh, but I can't explain this. Y yeah, uh, we were more surprised than they were. How do I put this? It's as if all of this energy was spent planning, we spent planning was pointless. I suppose it's not that bad. They said that our match was normal. I should be happy about this, and yet... A anyway, oh, we should probably get up too, huh? Y yeah Get up! What were you doing, sitting on the floor? You've all been standing... Oh, I love St. Germain's Mansion! <laughs> Back in her... I love it. Afterward... We moved over to the lounge and explained the situation to everyone. I don't know who it is. I see, I see. So this is all to keep your parents at ease. 
And his reasoning is very like you, Victor. I know that's not his voice, but I can't quite get it yet. Yes, so at least until the 24th, Victor and I are significant others. I came to London a few days ago so we could spend more time getting our act straight. Right. Oh, we decided to rehearse this in front of you to get more practice. I'm sorry if it was a bit sudden. He's like, Jesus. Oh, it's no trouble at all, Victor. Oh, we knew that you two were acting strangely the moment you came to the mansion. Y yes Mr. Envy was completely aware that this was an act, of course. Yes, I was fully aware of this. Envy, you are crying. But you do know our party is on the 24th, correct? The same day of your parents' visit. Oh, no need to worry. I won't be meeting my parents for very, for very long, and I'll be coming here right after. St. Germain makes a troubled expression, and Victor shakes his head in haste. Yet... No, you will not be doing that. Spend the day with your parents, Victor. Yes, you're right. Let's postpone the party for a few days. What? Didn't everyone come back to London to be here on Christmas? It was just coincidence, really. Christmas isn't all that important to me. It will be when we get to your own. I love you so much. Indeed. We were planning to stay in London until the new year anyway, so this is not a problem. Yep. In fact, being able to party with the crew even after Christmas ends will only make us make this twice as fun. Yeah, but that's just Christmas Eve. We can party on Christmas. Christmas is when you... I mean, Christmas Eve is when you're like, Yeah, because tomorrow's Christmas! And then you wake up on Christmas and you open all your presents and then you're like, No, now it's over. And it's depressing. See? Everyone agrees it's a good plan. And you just leave the preparations to us. And you two should get some more practice in. Th that sounds great, but why is everyone okay with... Victor... Victor stares at me wide-eyed as he keeps quietly. That's right. Out of everyone in Lupin's crew, Victor is the only one with living parents. Lupin, Van Helsing, Impey, and St. Germain, Telly, Cece, and even myself. I'm not sure of the details, but we all either don't have parents or they've passed away. Oh my god, that's so... I mean, okay, St. Germain is like 700 fucking years old, so we get that. But like, and Delly's parents were murdered by Van Helsing, but like everybody else's parents are like... Oh... That's so sad. <laughs> oh. You really should spend time with your parents, Victor. If they're anything like you, I'm sure they're both kind-hearted people. Van Helsing nudges him in the chest, and Victor casts his eyes down for a moment. Look, <laughs> Van Helsing's being adorably nice. I love him. He's, he's such a fucking marshmallow. I fucking love him. Raising his head up, he looks into everyone's faces and nods. Thank you, everyone. I'll take you up on your suggestion. Enjoy your parents while you have them, Victor. It's really sad at Christmas when they're gone. Um, then, in order to master our lover's act, we decide to practice as much as we can. <laughs> Although Victor is currently an invaluable doctor who provides medical care to Lower Street, if the clinic does not stay open, more and more people will be helpless, so we can't go on dates the entire time. That said, I'm sorry for the wait. Next patient, come into the examination room, please. Today, December 22nd, I spent my day helping out Victor with his work at the clinic. There's been a steady stream of patients all day. It's fairly, or rather, extremely busy. I have much respect for Victor, to think he's been doing this all alone. Is this your new apprentice? Dr. Stein is young, but you're even younger. Uh, no, she isn't an apprentice or anything like that. How do I put this? She's... Oh, of course, of course! You don't have to say it! Doctor, you've gotten married, haven't you? Married? Married? Well, they certainly skipped a few dozen steps and have clearly misunderstood. That's his mother. N no, it's not like that at all. I mean, not that we wouldn't, but we're only just... We only just started dating. She's just here helping me out today. Oh, same difference, isn't it? A young married couple sounds cute. That's right. I'm very jealous, I must admit. Well, anyway, let's start the examination. Victor says this in a fluster, perhaps feeling my icy glance on him. This entire day, all of his regular patients treated him like this, again and again. Even if we were his actual wife, he would be like, Well, I mean, it's just, uh... He's just a stutter little goofball, I love him. Phew. Great work, Victor. 
That was the last one for today. I just took down the sign outside, too. Thank you. You're so quick at this. It's really helped me out a lot. Well, a good doctor should have a good help. I chuckle as I put away some medical files. Victor laughs a little, too. Spacey, hey, I'm sorry about earlier. About what? You know, when they thought we were actually married and I so loudly asserted that we were just dating. Oh, that. Hey, there's nothing wrong with just dating right now. So yeah, I don't mind at all. Really? Thank goodness. That definitely gives me some relief. Relief from what? Before I could ask, he strains his medical files and stands up. You must be hungry. How about we go get dinner? A date? What? We're dating, so uh, this is a date, right? Oh, oh, right. Yes. Yes, let's go on a date. I huddle close to him as we walk together. The bliss I feel being together with him. There in the balance is also a loneliness in knowing that this is all temporary. Perfect place to end it. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this part up here. Um, Look at it, it's all white. So anyway, we're going to start up here, and I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up, and subscribe to see more!